Thank you, comrades. We're going to get on with the last contribution now, the fin final contribution, which will be of our, our vice chair, Jyoti Bra. Jyoti, as you know, has um, been doing a fantastic job with the World Anti-Imperialist Platform, as well as really getting our social media profile elevated. She does a huge amount. She edits our paper. She leads many of our contributions, and we've been very proud of the work that she's been doing to push forward uh, our, our work, our line, to help people understand uh, what, we are, what we are doing in the party and why they should join us, and really what the working class needs to do to liberate itself. So it's with real great pleasure I have introducing Jyoti. I know you've come a long way to see her, so please put your hands together and welcome her. Very much, comrades. I promise you, this is the shortest speech of the night. So uh, feel free to sit down and just chill out for five minutes. I'm here really just to sum up on behalf of the party, bring together what we've he heard here today in so many different ways from so many fantastic and inspiring speakers. I hope that you have enjoyed listening to them as much as we have, that you have learned from every one of them, their different approaches, their different experiences, their different perspectives on the importance, the significance of October. And I just want to sum something up about October for you. You know this, you know this, but you have to always bear it in mind. It's easy to forget in the day-to-day in the -day cut and thrust of life, the hurly-burly of just trying to survive. It's easy to forget these things. October changed the world forever. Forever. It wasn't a blip. It wasn't a thing that happened that day a long time ago. It was the beginning of a process which is still underway. It opened a new historical era. We always have to remember that. We live in the era that October began. Never forget it. Never imagine that our movement is just this few people sitting here and the rest of the world doesn't care. Whether they know it or not, we have the key to the future of humanity. Don't forget it. You know, October disproved imperialist propaganda about the subject races, about how the colonized peoples, the black people, the brown people, were inherently backward, would never be able to rule themselves. It disproved it forever, categorically. Now, the imperialists have to talk about anti-racism and equality. Why? Because of October. October disproved class society propaganda about women's inherent inferiority. They used to tell us, in this country, until quite recently, that women just have littler brains Littler bodies, they're a bit weak and a bit useless. They're only fitted for raising children and taking care of their husbands and cooking the dinner and doing the laundry. It was Soviet example that disproved that decisively, conclusively, and forever. It was the Soviet Union that proved that people of different nationalities really can live together and work together in harmony, in cooperation, for the benefit of all. It was the Soviet Union that proved decisively that workers really can do without capitalists. <laughs> and it proved, we've heard from some of our speakers earlier about the problems we face in our society and about how imperialist propaganda tries to tell us that, oh, well, yes, it's really bad, isn't it? But what can you do? Well, it was the Soviet Union which proved that you can do something, that the needs of the masses really can be taken care of. And the fact that we have and have had healthcare, education, housing, even things like legal aid and cultural access for the masses in Britain and other imperialist countries they were all the result of workers' demands to be allowed to follow the Soviet example. They were not the result of kindness or benevolence of our rulers. They are not the reflection of British or Western civilized values. These are socialist values, comrades. <laughs> the 
this, this is a message we have to take to people. Everything we have that's worth having is a reflection of socialist values and socialist humanity. And the other thing I wanted to highlight to you today is that October founded a movement in its image. It showed us the need for the Bolshevization of our movement. What does that mean? It means building parties of the type that Lenin built, the type that can actually organize the working class. You know, most of the parties that made up the Communist International in the beginning of its founding were small and they were new. Some of them were splinters from existing old big parties which had become totally rotten in the peaceful period before World War I and had been exposed during the course of that terrible war. These parties emerged in a period of crisis and revolutionary turmoil. They grew quickly because they worked together and followed a strongly unified and scientific line. Of course, they were helped to grow by the example of the USSR. During the time of Stalin, the Soviet Union faced and overcome every kind of difficulty. Its prestige grew and grew and grew. With Stalin and the Bolsheviks at their head, the movement was strong everywhere. It attracted the best and the brightest, and not only from the working class, but from every class, especially the young. Even from the bourgeois class, young people joined the communist movement in that time because they saw the advance of the capitalist system. They saw the decay, the crisis, the drive to war and fascism of dying imperialism, and they wanted to be on the side of progressive humanity. This is what a real movement does for people. This is how it inspires people. It's another message we need to take to heart. It's not the size of an organization or its age that determines its usefulness to the working class. It's the line it follows. It's the message it brings to the working class. And it's the nature of the international bonds that it forges. And just on this last point, I'd like to underline, you know, the litmus test today for cooperation and joint work that we are now engaging in so fruitfully, whether it's at home or abroad, is the attitude an individual or an organization takes to the imperialist drive to war, and especially in the fronts in Ukraine, in Palestine, in the Sahel, in Korea, and in Taiwan. And when we look at this war drive, these are the messages we are taking to the working class comrades. Russia and China are not our enemy. They are the cornerstones of today's growing anti-imperialist resistance movement. <laughs> the war drive of the imperialists has nothing to do with defending freedom and democracy. It has everything to do with trying to escape the deepest ever crisis of overproduction, a crisis that will never be overcome until we defeat imperialism. So our role in Britain is to oppose the war drive and expose the media lies that accompany it. We have to help people understand the only true way out of this, cr this crisis, this downward spiral into ever greater poverty, ever more war, a spiral towards fascism, total war, total immiseration of the masses of the world's population, and there's no way out that the imperialists can find. Our demands in this situation of the drive to war are for a mass movement of non-cooperation with every aspect of the NATO and Zionist war machines, whether it's making and transporting munitions and troops, whether it's logistical support, whether it's creating, printing or broadcasting, as Steve's pointed out, pro-war propaganda, which is in itself a war crime. Here's a case in point. Here's a case in point. Where were the print and media unions when the most recent deluge of lies about massacred babies was being unleashed on the British public? Why were print workers printing those headlines? Why were supermarket workers putting them out on the shelves? Where were their unions 
in organising their refusal to cooperate with this deluge of hideous and disgusting propaganda against the Palestinian resistance. Where are the transport unions refusing to transport British weapons towards Ukraine and towards Palestine? These things can be achieved, comrades, and they must be achieved. We must consistently, persistently, without stopping, ceaselessly, take these messages into the working class movement. A growing awareness of the need for this is there. We must harness the energy of everybody who's starting to understand this and bring them together in a movement that the trade unions can no longer ignore. We must follow the example of Lenin and the Bolsheviks. We have chosen a side in this war and we must not be intimidated from putting forward our views clearly to as many people as we can reach. And that is why, comrades, we also call for the victory of the resistance forces in all these wars. Because only through their victory can their peoples be free of the endless threats of imperialism. Only by defeating imperialist aggression all along the line can we advance once again on the road towards socialism, on the road of October. And that is why, comrades, our slogan in the wars is not ceasefire now, but victory to the resistance.